coracoid transfer for glenohumeral instability, Latardiet procedure. Kamal Gokuz, Associate Professor. Baskent University Alanya Research and Practice Center. Acknowledgement. This video was produced from the book source that was shown below. We would like to thank editors, Stephen H. Stern, Christopher M. Bono, Matthew D. Saltzman. Stern, Stephen H. et al. Key Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery. Team Medical Publishers, Incorporated, 2018. Abstract. The Latarget procedure is a useful technique to address recurrent anterior glenohumeral humeral instability with glenoid and or humeral bone loss. With appropriate indications, the Latarget procedure can be useful in both primary and revision instability cases. Indications. Recurrent anterior shoulder instability. Anterior glenoid bone loss following recurrent instability. Engaging hill sacs lesion following recurrent instability. Bipolar bone loss, glenoid and humerus, following recurrent instability. Contraindications. Epilepsy. Significant glenohumeral humeral arthrosis. Active infection. History of psychiatric disease. Voluntary shoulder instability. Preoperative preparation. 1. Perform a focused physical examination. A. Assess apprehension. Apprehension in mid-ranges of abduction and external rotation is suggestive of significant bone loss. B. Perform neurovascular exam to rule out neurologic cause of recurrent instability. C. Evaluate for global ligamentous laxity. 2. Obtain plain radiographs of the shoulder. A. True anteroposterior, AP, view in internal rotation, hill sacs lesions will be prominent on this view. B. Axillary lateral view, antero inferior glenoid bone loss will be most prominent on this view. C. AP with internal rotation view. D. Consider strike a notch view. E. Consider west point axillary lateral view. F. Consider scapular Y view. Preoperative preparation. 3. Obtain advanced imaging. A. Computed tomography, CT, scan, with or without arthrogram. With 3D reconstruction and humeral head subtraction, bone loss is most accurately characterized and quantified with CT scan. B. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, arthrogram, MRI will most accurately characterize and quantify capsula, labrile, and soft tissue injury. 4. Obtain appropriate preoperative medical and anesthesia evaluation. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. 1. A 90 degree oscillating saw for coracoid osteotomy. 2. A 5 mm round burr to decorticate coracoid and glenoid. 3. Specialized self retaining retractors for shoulder surgery. 4. Modified beach chair position. 5. The procedure can be performed under general anesthesia with or without an interscalene block. Tips and pearls. 1. Perform a diagnostic arthroscopy in advance of the open portion of the procedure when clinically indicated, minimize the duration of arthroscopy to avoid soft tissue swelling and distortion of anatomic planes. 2. Utilize a specialized 90-degree oscillating saw to facilitate coracoid osteotomy. 3. Place a Steinman pin in the scapula neck or use a pointed home and retractor to enhance glenoid exposure. Utilize stainless steel screws for coracoid fixation to minimize the risk of fixation failure. 5. For glenoid exposure, make a T-shaped capsulotomy. At the time of capsular repair, repair the capsule to the native glenoid surface, rendering the coracoid bone block extraarticular. 6. At the time of capsular repair, Selectively repair inferior and superior flaps of the capsule to reconstruct capsular tension anatomically. What to avoid? 1. Avoid incisions outside natural skin lines. 2. Avoid injury to the cephalic vein. 3. Avoid injury to the axillary and muscular cutaneous nerves. 4. Avoid lateralization of the graft, which will lead to articular step off and early glenohumeral arthrosis. 5. Avoid medialization of the graft, which can lead to recurrent glenohumeral humeral instability. 6. Avoid excessive tightening of the glenohumeral humeral capsule. Operative Technique. 
Preparation slash positioning. 1. With the patient anesthetized, perform an examination under anesthesia, evaluating shoulder instability and laxity in all planes of motion. 2. Document the range of motion and positions of maximal instability. 3. Place the patient on the table supine with pillows underneath the patient's thighs. Flex the waist to 35 degrees, knees to 40 degrees, and the back to approximately 20 degrees. 4. With the head and neck in a neutral position, contour bean bag around the patient. 5. Position the patient so the operative shoulder is pulled to the edge of the bed for adequate access. 6. Place the rolled sheet under the medial border of the scapula to stabilize it. 7. Prepare and drape the limb in standard sterile fashion. Diagnostic arthroscopy, when clinically indicated. A. Draw out bony landmarks, including a chromion, clavicle, the spine of the scapula, and coracoid tip on the skin. B. Mark a 5 cm skin incision from the inferior border of the coracoid toward the axillary crease. C. Infiltrate incisions with local anesthetic and deponeferrin. D. Perform brief diagnostic arthroscopy from a posterior portal. Confirm the presence of glenoid and humeral bone loss. Confirm assessment for engagement of hill sax lesion. Assess for concomitant pathology. Approach. 1. Incise skin and continue dissection to the deep fascia. 2. Identify the cephalic vein and deltopectoral interval. 3. Open interval proximally and distally. 4. Incise clavipectoral fascia. 5. Identify the coracoid tip. Coracoid osteotomy in preparation. 1. Place a Hohmann retractor at base of coracoid to expose coracoid tip. 2. Release pectoralis minor medially. 3. Release the coracoacromial ligament laterally, leaving an approximately 1 cm stump for possible later incorporation into repair. Figure coracoid osteotomy in preparation. 4. Osteotomize coracoid at the base of coracoid. Take care to make osteotomy anterior to the coracoclavicular ligaments. Make osteotomy from medial to lateral to help protect medial neurovascular structures. 5. Gently and bluntly dissect adhesions deep to the coracoid tip and strap musculature to mobilize the coracoid. Do not dissect further than 5 to 6 cm to protect the musculocutaneous nerve. 6. Decorticate the deep surface of the coracoid to a healthy bleeding osseous surface. 7. Gently place the coracoid medial to the glenoid. Glenoid exposure. 1. Do a horizontal split in the subscapularis muscle belly at the junction of the superior two-thirds and inferior one-third. 2. Develop a plane between the subscapularis and glenohumeral capsule. This is most easily done by beginning medially and continuing laterally. 3. Make a vertical capsulotomy in the glenohumeral capsule at the level of the glenohumeral joint. Convert this capsulotomy to a T-shaped capsulotomy by extending a horizontal capsulotomy. 4. Tag capsulotomy flaps with number 2 viral sutures. Coracoid fixation. 1. Deliver coracoid to the glenoid neck through the subscapularis split. 2. Place the coracoid bone block in the desired location at the level of the anterior-inferior glenoid. 3. Temporarily stabilize the position of the coracoid bone block with a K-wire. 4. Make an initial drill hole in the coracoid and bicortical through the glenoid. 5. Measure depth. Most common screw lengths are 34 to 36 mm. 6. Insert malleolar screw to two finger tightness. Coracoid fixation. 7. Remove K wire. 8. Repeat the process of inserting the second screw. 9. Further tighten both screws as necessary to achieve adequate compression of the coracoid graft to the glenoid. Figure. Capsular repair. 1. Place two labral suture anchors at the margin of the native glenoid face, one superior and one inferior. 2. Place stitches from the inferior anchor into the inferior flap with the arm in 45 degrees of abduction and 45 degrees of external rotation. 
3. Place stitches from the superior anchor into the superior flap with the arm positioned at the patient's side and in 45 to 60 degrees of external rotation. 4. If there is excessive capsular laxity, the repair can be performed in a pants over vest fashion to more completely eliminate capsular redundancy. Closure. 1. The subscapularis split can be reapproximated with zero viral suture. 2. The remaining layers are closed routinely. Acknowledgement. This video was produced from the book source that was shown below. We would like to thank editors, Stephen H. Stern, Christopher M. Bono, Matthew D. Saltzman. Stern, Stephen H. et al. Key Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery. Team Medical Publishers, Incorporated, 2018. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Like, comment and subscribe to my non-profit channel, and support orthopedic education worldwide.